Right. Any questions? Now sometimes what people do is they actually combine these two together. They'll take like, you know, they'll take one of these indices and they'll raise it to the half and then they'll do the same for the quantity indices. So this would be a T base price index, T plus one base price index, and this would be a T base quantity and a T base, a T plus one base quantity. I think that's usually called Fisher's ideal index that kind of combines these two together. And the idea is, well, I know one's too big and one's too small, so what about averaging them? That's probably makes some sense. Okay? Well, roughly you are taking the arithmetic average of the growth rates, right? Because think of what, what's in here. This is like 1 plus G. So it's like, it's like 1 plus G1 to the 1 half times 1 plus G2 to the 1 half, which is like 1 half the log of 1 plus, if you take logs of this thing, plus 1 half log of 1 plus G2, which is approximately equal to 1 half, because this is roughly G1 plus one half G2. So it's roughly like taking the average of the growth rates and law. I mean, that's kind of the idea. So, it, you know, for most approximations, the other reason you do it this way, you'll see in a minute, if I'm going to accumulate these things over time, they're going to accumulate real nicely because, and that's one of the reasons we use like log changes for a lot of stuff we do, because now, <coughs> let me go to the problem. So you might say, well, geez, if I'm going from September 2015 to October 2015, well, you know, whether you use the one bundle or the other probably isn't going to matter very much because the bundles are going to be really similar. What if I wanted to go over a long period of time? What if I wanted to go from, what if I wanted to go from, say, 1950 to today? So I would put, you know, sum xi 1950 pi 2015 divided by the sum of the xi 1950 pi 1950 versus sum of xi 2015 pi 2015 divided by the sum of the XI 2015 PI 1950. So there would be two alternative measures of the growth in prices from 1950 to today that use two different bundles. The bundle of what we consumed in 1950 and the bundle of what we consume today. And the answer is these would give me such dramatically different measures of the cost, that they'd be basically useless, right? Everybody understands why these would be essentially useless, right? I mean, like, look at this one. This would cost what? <laughs> like, like, the amount of computing power in here would be like world GDP maybe in 1950 or something like that, if, if the world could have afforded it, right? That's, right? You realize that, right? That this thing is probably doing more calculations per day than had been done by all people prior to 1950 or something. You know, it's, it's it, no, it's incredible, this, the amount of computing power. It's, it's, you know, it's computing power has gotten incredibly cheap, and because it's gotten so cheap, we use enormous amounts of it, right? That's, that's basic economics, right? So you would never buy this bundle back in 19, right? This is meaningless number. Uh, you would never even think about buying today's bundle at 1950 prices. Similarly here, well, you could probably buy all these things today pretty much. Many of them you probably wouldn't even want, but that's okay. 
<laughs> but nonetheless, you could think about the 1950, but this would leave out. Somebody brought up, I think, last, didn't somebody mention new goods last time? That is, this would leave out all those goods that weren't around in 1950. So this would give the cell phone like way too much weight, right? Because you would never buy it in 1950. This would give the cell phone way too little weight, right? That is, it's hard to know how you do it. So one way to do it is what's called a chain price index. 